Hello and welcome to week two, lecture number three, film production distribution and exhibition. If you've made it this far, you get a special bonus, which is in this upcoming quiz, there will be an extra credit question worth two points asking you for the secret code. The secret code is bird box. Secret code for extra credit on the upcoming quiz is bird box. So a quick outline of what I'll be talking about in this video is the final phases of the film process, which is when the film has been completed, it is done, prints are ready to go, it still needs to be distributed and exhibited. So a film that's completed but has no distributor or place to be exhibited is not really a film at that point because no one sees it. So let's talk about this process of distribution and exhibition. Distribution is the power center of the film industry. Distribution is absolutely needed. It's the middleman between the filmmakers that have a product they want to get out to the world and the exhibitors that need some product to exhibit in their theatrical spaces, at their film festivals, on their streaming services. So the distributors have a large amount of power within the film industry. And throughout the years of corporate kind of conglomeration, of deregulation, we've moved to a point where Hollywood film distribution is controlled by six major corporations. That means that six companies control over 90%, almost all of Hollywood films are distributed by Warner Brothers, Paramount, Walt Disney, Sony, 20th Century Fox, and Universal. So that means that these six corporations have a lot of control over how films are distributed, when films are distributed, and really whether a film gets distributed at all. So another important thing to keep in mind here is that uh, these film distributors, these companies, are not only distributing films. They're massive entertainment conglomerates. They own a lot of other uh, businesses. They have stake in a lot of other businesses. For example, if you just look at the Walt Disney Corporation, which is one of the six major film distributors in the United States, they own Marvel Studios, they own Lucasfilm, ESPN, ABC, they have a 30% share of Hulu. They own theme parks, cruise ships, venture capital holdings, all sorts of different smaller companies and holdings are owned by the Walt Disney Corporation. If you look at the chart here on the right hand side of this slide, it shows that Disney owns, this is just TV networks, but Disney owns ESPN, Hearst, A&E, ABC, and then all of the offshoots of those networks as well are owned by Disney. So the distributors are incredibly powerful and massive corporations with huge financial interests in uh, the entertainment industry, not just in film production. But that doesn't really necessarily tell us what the distributor actually does, which is an important question. Um, a couple things that distributors do. They make the film prints, right? They actually make the copies of the films that go out. Uh, they schedule the release dates. They determine whether or not a film is going to be limited release or wide release. There's a process known as platforming, which basically means a film receives a limited release in a select number of cities. And after a period of time, if it's successful, it goes on to a wider release. Wide release are like the large films, the ones that you can go see at almost any movie theater the day that they come out. That's a wide release. And the distributor makes determinations about which films get wide releases or platformed or limited releases. Distributors also launch advertising campaigns. The cost to make a film is $70 million on average in the United States. The average cost of distributing, which includes the cost of promotion, is $36 million. So the cost of promoting a film is about half as much as the cost of making the film itself, which means the average film costs $100 million to make, to distribute, and to promote. Um, advertising costs can include all sorts of things, billboards, trailers, press junkets, print ads. Anytime you're scrolling through Facebook and an ad pops up for an upcoming movie, you know that someone has put a decent amount of money into making sure that that trailer or that poster or that interview with the star, the director, is in front of your face on your social media. 
marketing costs can be as high or even higher than the cost of producing the film. So in the average example above, where promotion costs 36 million and the film costs 70 million, that's only one example. There are films where the cost of advertising actually exceeds the amount that it costs to make the film itself, which is pretty incredible. And distributors aren't just marketing to the movie theater audience. They're not just marketing to you. They're also marketing to the awards committees, to critics, to film festival, festival organizers, to pretty much anyone that will make sure that the film gets out there and it gets seen. Um, as a student organization president, I actually get my fair share of marketing from film distributors who want us to show films at Wayne State. Um, I feel like a relatively small cog in a big machine when it comes to the process of film distribution, but even I, get sold to pretty regularly when it comes to these film distributors. So they really have a pretty far reach when it comes to getting their movies in front of audiences and getting their movies seen. So once the film is distributed, then the next step is to actually exhibit it. So the distribution is the middleman, the process between the film being made and the film being shown. Um, and this is the exhibition phase. So something that not necessarily everyone is aware of is how low the profit margin is for film exhibitors, especially multiplexes. Now, when I say multiplex, I'm referring to the large theaters with multiple screens. Uh, in this area, it would be something like an AMC, an MJR, or an Imagine, um, but there are different chains all over the United States. So these are your first run film exhibitors. They get the films basically as soon as they come out, they show them on multiple screens multiple times a day. The one thing that people don't necessarily know about these big multiplex theaters though, is that they actually don't make a lot of money from ticket sales. Over 70% of the money that's made by a theater chain comes from their concessions. The reason why concessions are so expensive at movie theaters is because they need to offset the cost of procuring films from distributors. It is incredibly expensive to get the rights to screen a film from a film distributor. So in order to offset that cost, knowing that they will not make a lot of money off of ticket sales, places like AMC or Imagine charges quite a bit for concessions. So the next time you go to a movie theater and you know it's going to be $20 to get pop and popcorn, just remember that it's the distributor you should be mad at and not necessarily AMC. Another thing to keep in mind is that this is a pretty massive change from the last 10 years. Now about 98% of the world's movie theaters, not just the United States, but the world's movie theaters are digital, which means that they use digital projection technology rather than traditional film reels. So we've really moved away from analog film, which allows some pretty interesting things, like you can go to a movie theater now and watch a live stream event of a concert or a play, which is not something you could have done however many years ago before the advent of digital projection technology. So that's a pretty massive change in how we see films. Another important thing to keep in mind, and another massive change to how films are exhibited, is that the ancillary market, which means after that first run movie theater market, the ancillary market has definitely become more of a player in the process of film exhibition than it was in years past. So if we're looking at things other than first run movie theaters, film festivals, ancillary markets, independent movie theaters, second run movie theaters have all become a much larger market share than first run movie theaters, which are struggling. So films are shown at festivals, I think we're all aware of this, and those events offer distribution and exhibition for films that might not otherwise be picked up for release. So you could have a film ready to go but with no distributor and take it to a film festival. Maybe it's picked up by a distributor and then gets a wide release later. This is pretty common, especially for films that do well on the festival circuit, that are audience favorites or critic favorites. And then the ancillary market refers to things like DVDs, digital downloads, and streaming. And when we talk about the ancillary market as if it's kind of a secondary market after first run movie theaters, it seems a little bit disingenuous because so many more of us watch movies on Netflix and Hulu and HBO and Amazon and YouTube than we do in movie theaters now. So to call it ancillary doesn't really seem very accurate. 
And as we move more towards digital and more towards streaming television, the nature of this model is going to continue shifting. Production to distribution to exhibition looks very different when you have Netflix produce, release, and exhibit on their own streaming platform in a very short period of time. So this is something to kind of keep an eye out for the next five to 10 years as we move more towards digital and more towards streaming um, because it's definitely rapidly changing over time. One important thing to keep in mind in film studies is that from day to day, you cannot necessarily predict where things are going next. It's important to keep an eye on how the technology is changing and how the interface and our interactions with that technology changes as well. Thanks for sticking around for all three lecture videos. If you have any questions about any of the content, feel free to send me an email on Wayne Outlook, and I will see you in class on Wednesday.